Hey, hey, what's happening, Webster Groves? This is Wave Energy Goal 8 Video Notes. What we're looking at in this goal is that we are going to be able to understand that speed and direction of light changes as it passes through different mediums. <gasps> mediums, we know that word. Oh, no, I hope you remember it. But this time we're talking about lenses. How do you make light bend? What? You can make it bend? Yes. You can. It travels in straight lines unless it's going through a new medium. And when it's going through a new medium, that change in speed, that change in direction causes light to bend. So we put a straw in a water glass and it looks like it's bent or broken, but it hasn't actually bent or broken. The light waves are just being slowed down. So this is what we call refraction. Refraction is the bending of light as it enters a new medium. For example, air to water, water to air, water to glass. What is a medium? Well, I hope you remember what a medium is. It is a material through which a wave travels. The classic example of this is the broken pencil. So you put the pencil in water and it looks like it got bigger, but it didn't really get bigger. Or you move it to the side and it looks like it's way over to the side, but it didn't really do that. So what is happening? It is, it's called an image when we see something that may not actually be there. And this happens when light changes its speed. It changes what we're seeing. It's called refraction. Light is being bent. So Bill Nye here to tell us a little bit about light bending and bouncing. Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill, 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 Bill. Oh, sorry. This magnifying glass makes my eye look big. Now, why is that? Please consider the following. When light enters something like air, water, glass, or plastic, it slows down a little. And when it slows down, it changes direction. See how one eye is lower than the other? See? Take a look at this. Here are three straight beams of light. When they go into the piece of plastic straight, they come out straight. But if the plastic is tilted, the beams of light get tilted. See, they change direction, so they come out this side offset. Now, what would happen if the piece of plastic didn't have straight sides, but had a curved side, like a magnifying glass? Well, the light would change direction, right? Because the surface of the plastic is curved, each beam of light enters the piece of plastic at a slightly different angle, and it changes direction a slightly different amount. Look, over here, the beams of light come together at a single point. This is called the focal point. Now, what about the magnifying glass? Well, suppose your eye were over here, and light from the room were bouncing off of your eye and going through the piece of plastic this way. Well then, the small area at this end would be spread out over a large area on this side. Your eye would be magnified. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on Consider the Following. Alright, we all missed that theme song. So, what's happening um, is that light is ch changing its speed. And when light changes its speed, it refracts, it, it bends. So when light passes from air into water, the light slows down, okay? Air to water, so it bends. Light slows down even more when it passes from water to glass. So consider like an aquarium. When light passes from glass back into the air, the light speeds up. Light travels faster in air, a little slower in water, and slower still in glass. Okay, what I want you to notice here, I want you to notice that the angle here for air is the same as the angle as air over here. Okay, it, it travels the same speed in, in air, and so it's going to go through it at the same angle. 
what is the index of, refra of refraction? That is how much a ray of light bends when it enters a new medium. Um, so, for example, um, there is there's an index of refraction that, that shows, it gives a, a number value for different mediums to show how much light is refracting. Alright, this video, see if you can figure out what the woman is missing. This is a classic example of why people should be educated. July 6, 2007, about 4.30 p.m. I'm just wondering what the heck is in our water supply? What the heck is in our oxygen supply of the metallic oxide salt that create a rainbow effect in a sprinkler? What is oozing out of our ground? that allows this type of effect to happen. Not just around our sun and our moon anymore, everywhere we look, the visible spectrum is rainbows. This cannot be natural. Well, I've got news for you, lady. It kind of is natural. Um, and let's look at why. Okay, so what is white light? White light, we know, is all of the colors of the visible light spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We call this Roy G. Biv. So can it be separated? Yes, it can be, and it can happen naturally. Sometimes we can see white light separated by prisms into its various wavelengths and frequencies. How does a rainbow occur though? Anytime that white light from the sun enters a raindrop or a drop of water from say a sprinkler perhaps, the raindrop acts as a prism to separate the, the light. This display this is, displays the visible light spectrum. Okay, So this can happen really with any water because water acts as a, a prism in this case. It bends the light. Colors refracted are different amounts. So we notice that red is ref refracted the least and violet is refracted the most. That's because red has the longest wavelength, is reflected, refracted the least. Violet has the shortest wavelength. Okay. This difference in refraction causes white light to spread out into the colors of the visible spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. What is a lens? A lens is a curved piece of glass or other transparent material that is used to refract or bend light. We see lenses commonly in cameras. The type of image formed through a lens, the type of image formed by a lens depends on the shape and the lens and the position of the object. So there are lots of things that will determine what something looks like when it is being shown through a lens. A convex lens is thicker in the center than it is at the edges and as light rays pass through it, they are bent towards the center of the lens and the rays meet at a focal point. This is where the image can then flip upside down. So great picture here of what is happening to the light. We can't always see the light rays, but they go through this glass or this plastic lens and they bend inwards and they cross at a focal point. Okay, Actual photograph here of what that would look like. Light rays bending through that lens and crossing at the focal point. Um, so difference between a real image and a virtual image. If the object is further away from the lens than the focal point, it is a real image. The real image is formed. However, if the object is in front of the focal point, it looks closer than it actually is. It's not a real image, it's a virtual image. 
Um, that's why things look bigger in, say, like magnifying glasses. It's not the real thing going on. It's a virtual image. An object's position relative to the focal point determines whether a convex lens forms a real image or a virtual image. Concave lenses, on the other hand, are thinner in the center than they are at the edges when light rays traveling parallel to the axis pass through a concave lens. They bend away from the optical axis and they never meet. Remember, concave gave in. A concave lens can produce only virtual images because parallel light rays passing through the lens never actually meet. So the light rays go out in a concave lens. Here's what that might look like if we could see the light rays going through. They go in and bend out. Compare refraction of light through different materials. Uh, that is our goal, and that is what I'm hoping you got out of this video. Please come to class with questions about refraction, about how light is bent, and we will see you next time. Later.